Hey, you there. Thank you for watching, and welcome to Forge Lines Forever. Today, I have a 5v5 custom match here on the most amazing Roxas map generator. So let's go ahead and introduce our teams and our players, starting with Team 1 on the northwestern corner of the map, ending with Team 2 on the southeastern corner. Starting off with the southernmost player on Team 1 in Barbie Pink, it is Sing Ziggy going first land. He is an Aeon. And he is a 1300 to his northeast. We have in Batman Gray Han Solo going first land as a UEF. He is a 1400, and I wonder if he will shoot first. To his northeast in Emerald Green is Nomander going first land as another Aeon here for Team 1. He is a 2000 rated, the highest ranked player on Team 1 and in the game overall. To his west in Pac Man Yellow, it is Master of Seasons going first land as a Seraphim. He is a 1300. And in the rear air sled here for Team 1 in Orange Color Orange, we have SPCR going first air as a UEF. He is a 1600. Over Team 1 side of the map, they have two Aeon, two UEF, and one Seraphim, which means Team 1 lacks cyber and technology. Starting off with Team 2's westernmost player in tropical ocean blue it is vindex going land all day he is a uef and he is a 1900 highest ranked player on team two to his east in glow in the dark green we have twitch mofo going first land as a seraphim he is a 1300 in the regard air slot here for team two in snow white we have brsd triple c 97 going first land as a cybern he is an 1800 in land oak tan to his normal it is gamer nine triple x going first and second land as an aeon he is a 1500 and last but not least for team two in ruby red is the seven player of mutso going first land he is an 1100 so for team two side of the map they have two cybrans one aeon one uef and one seraphim which means team two has all of the technology or slash factions available to them Let's go ahead and look at the reclaim here before our players scoop it all up. And for 10 players, they have 9,000 reclaim in mass, which means it's about 900 mass per player. But what they lack in reclaim, they gain in mass points. There are a ton of mass points here, and a lot of them kind of just spread out. It's like a shotgun, just kind of just shot them everywhere. There are a couple of trimex positions for some players to group uh, to grab specifically looking at team two looks like there are four of them one for each of the frontline players and there's a decent amount of mexes like i said just kind of everywhere there's one tiny little mex here in the corner but besides that i mean there's some also civilian structures that our players can grab as well in terms of reclaim and there's gonna be a lot of fighting it's very open in terms of the environment there's a couple of hillocks a couple of small plateaus but it's essentially just a flat map and let's go ahead and get on into it. We do see movement here from both teams. Team 2 has all of their frontline players and their rear guard slot player moving to the middle. Team 1 doing the exact same thing. So all of the players have left their main bases, left home, and decided to venture out into the wilderness. We do see Sin Ziggy moving in, taking on a couple of strikers from Vindex. And just to point out, we have the highest rated player on Team 1, Nomander, Going up against the lowest red player on Team 2, Mutso. And it's the reverse here for Team 2 versus Team 1. Team 2, Vindex at 1,900 going off against Sin Ziggy. They're one of the lowest ranked players at a 1,300. A little bit of a mismatch there, but it's just due to the fact of how the map is mirrored. And the highest rated players are in the same slot. They're just going to be facing off against different ranked players. So... We should see kind of a clockwise direction where Team 1, you know, just going off rating gets an advantage in the east, while Team 2 gets an advantage in the west. A couple of uh, Air Scouts getting a nice little readout here for Team 1. A couple of units start to push through here. They're going to actually run into the comm, which is never a good thing. Looks like there is an engineer building some radar facilities. Love to see that, and there are multiple of them. As kind of an early warning system. Nice try mix position here being used as a nice forward operating position for T1 units and a lot of spam coming out of his base. And that is, of course, Gamer 9 Triple X. We did see the comm of the Rigardessa player, BRS, going to be moving northward. So he is going to be assisting 
his uh, lowest ranked pl player teammate of Mutso on defensive measures in the East. So that should shore up a little bit of that uh, discrepancy in the rating system. We do see the calm of Han Solo moving slightly over to the East. He could be able to respond to this calm on calm engagement here between these two players. And it would make this essentially a 3v2 if you count Gamer9 coming into intercede as well. And it does look like Team 1's Master of Seasons is nearby, as well as the Calm of SPR. So four of the five Calms for Team 1 on this essentially northeastern side. Team 2 only has those three players, and we do see, of course, maybe Twitchy Mofo might transition eastward, but he's again going to use the opportunity. Of there's a nice little hole that uh, Team 1's kind of exploited. Or go, uh, sorry, caused, and he's going to exploit it. Gun damage range started here for Han Solo in the middle. Maybe he will shoot first with that gun upgrade. And Mutso and Nomander going to have some words. Nomander at 11,000 hit points. Mutso at 10,000 hit points. And that does look like Mutso will retreat for the time being. And, of course, we do see that calm of BRS moving in to assist. It, again, takes a while to traverse this map just because of its size, and comms can only move at one speed. Transports definitely would assist with that, but of course uh, he's focused on upgrading his facilities and he's going for T2 as we speak. Team 1 probably should be going for T2 as well. Yep, they're already at 70%, so Team 1's SPR a little bit ahead of the curve in that regard, but uh, BRS is not uh, that far behind. Sin Ziggy saying he's getting uh, destroyed and he is. Looks like a hook maneuver outbound from the high speed player of Index on Team 2. Able to catch Sin Ziggy unawares, cuts his supply lines. We do see a combined push out from both the forces of Fuchimofo and from Gamer9. With Han Solo rooted to the spot over in the east, it will allow a little bit of pressure to push directly through. Units still haven't responded to this as of yet. And even units from Vindex going to come and join this push as well. Multiple mexes are going to go down here for Han Solo. He's definitely going to be feeling it. Units have been dispatched to go southward to intercept but they are going to be outnumbered still for the time being and still more units flooding in for team two vindex grab the stratum expedition that should be in the hands of sin ziggy to be fair and he's going to start establishing a nice forward operating production facility there gun spinning range on the line coming online here for twitch mofo in the middle and come on no not come on come action as of yet the air player of spr now spcr excuse me on the front lines assisting with pushing against Mutso. Mutso has retreated. Of course, we do see BRS over here in the east. He's going to grab this Trimax position here. Maybe it was a donated to him, or he's just going to grab it anyways. Doesn't really matter at this point. It is going to be under his control. And a lot of the units from Team 2's Gamer 9 going to divert northward. He's going to send his comm westward, push this side. So again, as a reminder, Team 1 has four of their five players right here very close to one another and most of them going for gun upgrades spr the only one does that does not have an upgrade queued or installed and they're all all going to be gun upgrades team two is much so going for a gun upgrade definitely a smart choice just due to the fact that he's going to be facing three gun comms pretty shortly and of course brs over here in the east so very lopsided here for both teams team one definitely has the advantage here but of course they are losing territory in the west and we do see an attack outbound on Ziggy, Sin Ziggy's commander. And this might be the first kill of the game. That comm is going to drop very, very quickly here. And, uh, yeah, he's not getting out of there anytime soon. Overcharge kills a ton of units, though, that might have just saved his life. That is the downside with grouping. He takes out another set of units there. That de definitely saved his life there. Looked like he was going to die. But looks like he's going to be fine for the time being. But, of course... His frontline position is collapsing. Gun upgrade has been started for Bindex, so he'll be able to push in that regard. But man, that overcharge from Sim Ziggy definitely saved his life. Probably killed off, I think it was like six units and one overcharge. So definitely, definitely with the energy expelled for killing off that many units. And he now has a one-star veteran seat, so a little bit more survivability on that commander. The ground? Right? I don't know what that's in reference to. Anyway, units outbound from Mutz are going to draw the attention of two of the commanders from Team 1. Nano has been starting here for Master of Seasons. He is Seraphim. He's going to be a little bit more tanky because of that. Stealth on the way here from Mutz. So he might just go for Nano as well, and he might just have to do that to fight off that comm of Team 1's Master of Seasons. We do see BRS just going for Mexes. 
Going to go for a nice little land facility to probably go after Requin. But this attack continuing to push and push from Mutso. It does look like the air player look has been spotted by Team 1. Looks like, yeah, both those comms are headed in that direction. BRS is currently rooted to the spot going for a land facility. That might not be uh, fun there. Fallback, bro, it's 3v1 already to all. Uh, it's not going to go well. And a huge attack up on here from Vindex. We see large amounts of units from Vindex as well as units from Tuchimofo and Gamer9. Gamer9 have actually shifted his units northward to go exactly where Han Solo was and trying to push on this northern side. But BRS is going to be caught unaware as the facility has been established, but it's going to be cut off by two commanders. And this might be the first kill of the game. I thought Sin Ziggy was going to be the first kill, but I guess not. SPR, SPCR says, bro. Don't really know what he's getting at. See, BRS is trying to retreat, and these comms will not engage. They could have killed off that airplane at BRS, but decide not to for some reason. Don't really know why. Maybe they just didn't see him at all. But the units outbound from Vindex still pushing in. Team 2 gaining a ton of territory here in the west. As I mentioned before, it was kind of looking like it was going to be kind of a clockwise thing where Team 1 would grab the east and Team 2 would grab the west. And so far that is happening here at 10 minutes. No one has died yet since Ziggy, it was the closest. But looks like he might be uh, just sitting in his base repping up. Probably should get a speed and range upgrade on board that uh, Aeon Commander just to be a little bit more... Uh, for its survivability and attack at range. Mudso continuing to just constantly attack. Nomander, Nomander out of position, just kind of running around here. He does have T2 online in terms of land, so he's able to fight off this T1 spam, but still constantly having to divert units back to his main base, depletes them from the front line, makes them you know, have to constantly go in circles, allowing Team 2 to build up a little bit more of a defensive measure. Pings do go down, alerting Team 2 that Team 1's Master of Seasons forces has pushed through. He has regen on board. He's able to passively regen his nearby units. And another concerted push up from Team 2 still hammering on the western approach. Han Solo is in the yellow. Twitchy Mofo has gun on board and is being very, very aggressive, of course, in the middle of the map. Han Solo was over here for a while and it allowed Huchmofo to be able to push in a little bit more than probably he intended to, at least Han Solo intended to. Master of Seasons dealing with the spam outbound from Mutso. Mutso doesn't really have a lot to work with, has T2 now, and the comm of BRS has retreated. He essentially just walked all the way, grabbed a couple mixes, and then is going to walk all the way back. T3 Air is online for him. T3 Air also online here for his opponent of SBCR in the air game. Units are being diverted here from Gamer9 to help assist with defensive measures. Regen doing a great job of keeping these units online. It isn't going to make them invincible, but it's definitely going to help with uh, keeping them alive at least a little bit longer, especially the Ilshis. You can see the hit points is going back and forth, back and forth. But once you consolidate your, attack, your firepower, it breaks through the regen on board essentially anything but again you have to have the units to be able to out uh, pace the regen of a unit to be able to actually damage it brs is going to be here at least for defensive measures build some pd or something just to defend your teammates base there brs would be my uh, little two cents there facilities automatically control k it probably just going to be reclaimed at this point kind of see the writing on the wall here and that's so will be forced out of his main base Sin Ziggy still has a hold on his main base, but it is starting to crumble as more and more units are building up here for Vindex on that western side. And Twitchy Mofo essentially isolating the comm of Han Solo. He doesn't have a lot of forces around him, and it's going to be a gun comm versus a gun comm. If Twitchy Mofo were to go for Nano, that would probably make it uh, very much that one-sided affair. Master of Seasons pushing in. A PD being established here. It is Tickle Cannons, but it's better than nothing. Comma BRS is nearby. Bombs over the top. Clear out all of those engineers, which means no more Tickle Cannons are being constructed. ASF's going to be able to take out the rest of those bombers. But the damage is done. Mutso will lose his main base. Mutso actually behind the attacking line of Master of Seasons. There is going to be a little bit of a pincer maneuver happening here. But again, it is a gun, nano, and region commander versus a gun and stealth commander and no upgrade on board BRS. It might be a kill here. Or it might be a trade here. Units here from Gamer9 have come in to intercept. Overcharge. No, doesn't know where that overcharge was going. But blazes are here. They're better than nothing. 
probably would prefer to offens, not offens, but uh, om not omens. Obsidian, that's the word I'm looking for. Mutso trying to just get out of range of Master of Seasons Commander. Master of Seasons is going to fall back, luckily due to the, uh, due, uh, Mut for Mutso due to the fact that uh, all those blazes have just kind of rushed in. And this will keep him alive for the time. His base has seen better days, but with the comma of BRS nearby, it might be enough to hold off Team 1. But again, Team 1 has, well, they were going to say they had four commanders. They only have two now. SPCR has retreated, at least for the time being. And Han Solo still going to push forward. Twitchy Mofo will have to retreat in the face of all those pillars. But he has his Ilshis online. And uh, that fashion seed will definitely skyrocket here for Twitchy Mofo. Still, no one has died, surprisingly. We've had a couple of close calls. Mutso in the east, Senziggy in the west. Shield on the way here for Vindex. He has uh, the Zephamp on board, that commander. So he's going to be a little bit more tanky. He has UEF. I mean, they are known for their tankiness. 19,000 hit points, essentially more than doubles his hit point uh, pool there. One is uh, Shield, of course, and one is regular hull. Missiles outbound here from Team 2 going after the Mexes for Team 1. And the mass income relatively the same. Uh, team two slightly ahead than team one, but not by much, especially at 15 minutes. That's 30 or 40 is not really that much to be behind. That's less than 10 mass per player for team one to be behind. Essentially, it's like a T2 max. T T2 and a couple of T1s. That's really not a whole lot of mass. It does make a difference, of course, but not by that much. We do see a nice concerted effort here from Team 1 to push once again. Lots of blazes running around here for Twitchy Mofo in the east. He probably should just send his... Com not Twitchy Mofo, sorry, Gamer 9. Gamer 9 should probably send his commander to lead his troops in battle. Because that is adding a lot of augmented firepower here for Team 1's Master of Season. Especially because he is Seraphim and he has that regen aura online. And as we speak, Gamer 9 is going for a gun upgrade. So, you know, speak it into the ether, I guess, and he'll just do it. But Sin Ziggy being attacked once again by that commander. Vindex is going to walk him down at this point. There's no surviving this. There's no amount of overcharge that will save him from this. Sin Ziggy looks like he's still going to you know, have to fall back. He has gun range and speed on board, but it is not going to be enough. PD nearby is going to not really influence this uh, outcome here. One more shot will kill him. Vindex, what are you doing? If you want to kill the... I mean... I don't know. There is this thing, of course, killing off the uh, a player on, let's say, Team 1 will allow Team 1's other players to get more mass income. So it looks like Findex is going to just be the bullet sponge for the time being. So Sin Ziggy makes it out with less than 100 hit points remaining. That was more of, I would assume, a tactical play of not killing off the comm versus killing off the comm. So again, that is the downside with full share and partial share games is if you kill off a player, all of their mass income, all of their energy income, all that, depending on if you have partial share or not. Uh, full share all the units go over it makes a huge difference for somebody else and that would go to Nomander who would probably just give it over to Han Solo or yeah he'd probably give it over to Han Solo to be fair but Gamer9 and Master of Seasons getting into it advanced ranged and speed got blitzed down here by Gamer9 so he has the Aeon Sniper Commander online all he's missing is the shield and he'll be perfect well at least a shield he can go for the heavy shield but his units moving in to the northeast, trying to intercept units outbound from Nomander as well, essentially doing du double duty and attacking units on both fronts. And Mutso is going to be here. The units are going to be drawn away at least a little bit and have to be thrown back. You can't see, you know, Nomander is essentially playing, you know, come get me, come get me. I'm in full retreat, says Zin Ziggy. A nice tactical uh, uh, outburst there from Zin Ziggy. And PD firing into the comma Vindex. Vindex, of course, has the shield on board. It's going to take a little bit to shoot through those hit points. 50 hit points a shot from that PD. Overcharging kills off the last T2 PD, and this facility has been destroyed for Team 1 Sin Ziggy, essentially nullifying him from the game. And that is definitely a better outcome just due to the fact that uh, the mass and energy and all of that doesn't go to anybody else on Team 1, so Team 2's Vindex could kill off Sin Ziggy and just not even worry about it. Mutso is still holding somewhat of a position here in the east, trying to build up as much as he can. He's, of course, getting T3 online, so those bricks will definitely assist with the mobile brick wall that they can form. Master Season is being shooed away by the superior tech forces of Gamer 9. He only has T1 and T2 available to him. He has some T3 units from Nomander nearby, but not that many. He won air for now, says SPCR. 
It looks like uh, he's producing some gunships as we speed. So lots of T1 air facilities are being established. I don't know if he's going to upgrade them all at once or not. Usually they just build, uh, the airplanes build T3 and call it a day, but I wonder what his strategy is with that. But you can see just the amount of blue, tropical ocean blue in the southwestern corner. Either that be the mixes of the units just constantly being thrown at Team 1's front door. It is, it, like I said in the beginning, it was going to be the weaker of the two sides for Team 1, and it has started to collapse. Of course, uh, Sinzig is not out of the game just yet, but uh, at least for now, he's been neutralized. And now we see Gamer9 trying to just keep Master of Seasons at bay, doing dual duty and protecting himself and his teammate of Mutso. And I feel like Gamer9 doing, again, a very good job of saying, hey, I know this is the weaker of the two sides. I know he's kind of, you know, suffering a lot. And, and also to the credit of uh, BRS, he's sending in support, sending his engineers in so they're nearby, sending in ASF's gunships as well on this eastern side, again, trying to shore up defenses, at least do a little bit of maybe some attack runs in the east and trying to delay Nomander's advance. Nomander is currently producing 190 mass income versus Mutso's 57. So you can see just the disparity in the mass income game. It's a 4 to 1 advantage roughly for Team 1's Nomander. So it's, uh, it's not 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 really going good there for, for Mutso, but he's holding in there to his credit. He is definitely holding in there for the time being. He probably needs to get Nano on board that commander just to be able to survive a little bit longer. And he does have T3 online going for Loyalists. Hansel getting more mexes online. And we see the Ilshis v Ilshis going at it here between Mitwichi and Master of Seasons. He's diverted his forces southward. Don't really know why. He could have sent them over to Nomander and been able to push probably at least a little bit more against these players in the east. But now we see three players on Team 2 on the front lines. Team 1 has Nomander back in his main base. Twitchy, not Twitchy, but Master of Seasons over here to the west coming up to assist on Solo. Noticing that, of course, this is the side that Team 2 is going to just focus down. And there's only two players doing it. Mainly it's Vindex, but of course he has a lot of assistance here from Master of Not Master of Seasons. Confusing the commanders. Twitchy Mofo pushing in. So essentially isolating, trying to at least isolate the eastern half of Team 1 and not allowing them to move in and assist in defensive measures. Love this play from Team 2. Again, just pushing ever so slowly. Of course, gaining territory, building up defenses. Again, layered defenses, getting a couple of PD online. That way he has a fallback position, and then a fallback position to that, and a fallback position after that. It obviously illustrates the fact that he is a 1900. Get Flax as SPCR. Uh, lost air for now. I mean, he already said he lost air, so not... I mean, all the players on Team Much probably be aware of that on the unit race. Yeah, definitely due to the fact that uh, BRS has what? 36 ASFs versus Europe, like, 6. Oh, sorry, 12. Excuse me, 12. So a 3-1 to one advantage for Team 2. Oh, yeah, air control definitely in the hands of Team 2, especially with the gunships running around trying to assassinate Mass. But, of course, Nomander has countered with mobile AA, essentially rendering those, a those gunships nullified. At 21 minutes, we see Team 1 at 5 players left, Team 2 at 5 players left as well. So no one has died so far. Mass incomes here between the teams pretty close. Team 2 a little bit ahead. They've been a little bit ahead the entire game. But still, Team 1 is keeping it in there, especially with this entire base for Sin Ziggy annihilated. Speaking of which, map control, more than 50% of the map is owned by Team 2. So they're in the lead of that. But, of course, let me know down in the comments what you think is going to happen. Please, if you haven't done so already, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and, of course, share this video with anyone, everyone, and especially your pets. And thank you so much for watching. We see a dual comm effort here from Team 1 from Master of Seasons and Han Solo trying to push in against Twitchy Mofo. Twitchy Mofo trying to do what he can. He has only gun on board versus the gun, nano, and region commander of Master of Seasons. Vindex continuing to push on this western side, not giving up any ground, any time, any territory, nothing. Not allowing Team 1 to rest on this western side. The only issue I see with Team 1 pushing on this uh, eastern side of the west is the fact that uh, Vindex could push his units in, cut off supply lines, and essentially isolate two commanders quite instantly. So... Team 1 has to be very careful with how far they push south because the further south they push against Twitchy Mofo, the more units can easily collapse on top of both of those comms. And those comms are retreating, partly due to the fact that there are sniper bots online, so that's definitely going to make things a little bit more difficult to assail. 
especially if they constantly retreat and can fire backwards while they're moving definitely annoying units to deal with but of course i love that strategy because they can shoot at range and the other players can't and it's essentially a uh, free damage and you don't really lose units Team D trying to be spammed up here by Team 1's Nomander to deal with this massive amount of Vipers, but looks like they're just going to send in the uh, Harbingers and deal with it anyways. The, uh, the Ion Cannons, the EMP weapons of the Loyalists being able to shut down a c most units in the game. Not all of them, but most of them. There are, of course, some sniper bots online as well for Team 1's Nomander because he is Aeon. I, don't, I think that was when... The Forged Alliance, not Forged Alliance, but the, the oh yeah, Forged Alliance uh, expansion came out that they added sniper bots for Aeon. Because they added sniper bots for uh, Seraphim, of course, that was an entirely new unit. But uh, I think that's when they added I can't remember if that was a dev add-on, because I know T3 Mobile AA was an add-on by the developers for FAF a long time ago. But I just can't remember when they added the sniper bots to Aeon rosters. That's also the... the DLC that we got with like the Megalith and all the, all those units. Love the Megalith. Such a really good unit, but uh, I still think the Colossus deserves the 100,000 <laughs> HP and not 99,999 that it currently has. Just one HP. That's all I'm asking for. Just, <laughs> just make the make the even uh, make it a round number. Just so the you know it just it looks prettier that way. We see the Harbingers crashing on the Harbingers from Team One and Team Two. Gamer Nine again putting a lot of emphasis in forcing back Nomander, trying to keep him at bay from going after Mutso. And this is a huge hole here in Team 1's defenses. Gamer 9 could exploit it and just shove it down the middle of Team 1's throat. And But again, he's more focused on shielding his, uh, his teammate, which again is a very good endeavor. I love that from Team 2, making sure that uh, everyone is alive because, of course, APM will be a unit of measurement that cannot be calculated but uh, is very important as time goes on. ASF is essentially airlocking Team 1's air... well, trying to at least. I don't know why they're back here. Gunships are moving in. They have been spotted by the air of Team 1's SPCR. Where are SAMs? I don't know where the SAMs are. Oh, I guess there's some mobile flak nearby but... The uh, ASFs are oppressing Team 1. It looks like airlocking starting to happen, but there is AA being built, either static or mobile, so I don't really know if that's going to get a lot done. Look, the gunships took a little bit to get there, so they weren't able to be used quite as much as uh, Team 2's uh, air player really would have wanted them to be, so that is a, uh, that is a thing. We see in the east still those Harbingers actually able to force back the army from Nomander due to mobile missiles and artillery coming online here for Mutso. Mutso being the long range combatant and Gamer 9 being the close range combatant. Looks like those forces pushed up a little bit too far maybe. Need to retreat behind the large Harbinger lines. Harbinger, not Harbinger. That's up. Anyway, in the west we see Sinzik getting some Ravagers online. Also, of course, uh, that's from Han Solo as well. So trying to stay on any shield coverage, get more PD, as well get some Miasmas. And that army still from Vindex, still trying to push on forward. Again, not give Team 1 any quarter, any sort of uh, rest, as it would be. And Nomander... Again, it's very jostling back and forth. Either team cannot get a hold of a piece of territory or not. And the Harbingers are being outnumbered by the Bricks and the Loyalists from Team 2. Advanced Nano Repair coming online here for Twitchy Mofo. He's made very tanky after that. I don't see any efforts to build any sort of long-range artillery fire or any game enders or any of that sort of thing. Nukes. I don't see anything that and nuke would definitely help team one come back in this game most definitely unit starting to crash onto han solo and will han solo shoot first or will he be the one that is shot first we'll have to see still no one has died yet very surprisingly most matches i've cast recently somebody has died before 20 minutes well most the the latter match that i casted i think it was yesterday I think that really, yeah that was yesterday i think all right no one dies before 20 minutes, spoiler alert. So, be aware of that. 
Sin Ziggy pushing forward with his is that the that's the regular shield that's not the heavy shield and still team two is not able to crack this position Han Solo being assailed by some gunships outbound from the air player of BRS and this army moving in from Twitchy Mofo looks like everything is happening all at once here against team one Sin Ziggy doing a very good job of trying to hold these forces off as well as Han Solo Han Solo is in the yellow but he's been in the yellow before the amount of Titans online here for SPCR is not going to be enough just due to the fact that there is a lot more offense moving in. And this base here for Twitchy Mofo, not Twitchy Mofo, for Han Solo is going to be the target. Han Solo, if he gets any closer, he might just die. But the units here from Twitchy focusing on something else. Actually, no, they're going to go westward. They're going to go after Han Solo. And he will be the first casualty of the game. He was the one that was shot first. According to the special editions, he was shot almost by Greedo, but he barely missed. And Team 1 will lose a player. It is now a 4v5 in favor of Team 2 at 27 minutes on the clock. In the east, we see Harbingers versus Harbingers still going at it with some brick augmentation for Team 2. This is going to be gifted over to Nomander. But unfortunately for Nomander, this base is going to be ripped to shreds by this land army from Twitchy. So he's going to get nothing from this. He's going to get a couple of seconds of T3 and makes a collection of mass, but uh, that's not going to last very long. And shields have fallen here for Sin Ziggy, trying to build up some PD. Not really going to work out. Looks like those Titans are focusing him down. There's not enough, I think, to kill Sin Ziggy here, especially with the PD behind him. But still, the damage is done. The hole has been opened. Team 1's Master of Seasons has not diverted all of his forces westward. He has a chicken online going after... Vindex's position, Vindex moving out of range, sees the threat. There's really nothing from Team 2 that can fight this. There are some PD online, but there's not that many. And this might be a very successful attack outbound from Master of Seasons to delay the onslaught from Team 2 in the west. Since Ziggy drops into the red, another pass over from some Corsairs will kill him off. T1AA trying to do its best to prevent those Corsairs from landing. Dodging, weaving and dodging is going on here for Sin Ziggy. Drops below 250 hit points. Oh, are the Corsairs going to release the bombs in time? Oh, it's going to be close, but Sin Ziggy will stay alive. And the chicken is going to crash onto Vindex's position. He's uh, Master Season's keeping his forces at bay. Again, there's not really a lot that will keep uh, this chicken from accomplishing it, its mission. And Team 2 will lose that front line position. But the damage is done. Han Solo has been destroyed. And there's a big, big hole for Team 1. Two bases of Eco are now gone for Team 1. And we can see that in the totals. Team 2 at 1.4k. Team 1 at 1.1. That chicken is going to die, unfortunately, in the middle of Vindex's position. So he'll get a little bit of Eco from that. Master of Seasons probably should have moved in a little bit and tried to regen that chicken to keep it alive. For as long as possible. Iron Storm will wreak havoc on Vindex's position, but uh, I think he should be fine. He's actually getting on a transport to leave. He's going to get the heck out of there. If Team 1 were to notice that they would go after him, but there are ASFs protecting him. Mutso has started a laser in the east, and he still has only stealth on board, so he's probably going to upgrade to cloaking. You can see there's the hole in Team 2's front line completely just annihilated but there are still facilities online pumping out <laughs> pumping out some units so this position isn't going to collapse entirely but at least a decent amount t3 facility back here going to start producing a bunch of mobile shields and percy's it looks like is going to be the order of the day i don't see any experimentals coming online here oh okay excuse me there is one back here for uh, twitchy mofo don't see anything back here for team two's air player Nothing for Gamer9. Looks like there was an assault earlier on. Some mexes have been destroyed. But that could have been some missile launchers. But I do see a Colossus online. So, again, diverting all of his time and attention over here to the east. There is a Colossus coming online here for Team 1's Nomander, though. So it's going to be 1v1. Lots of mass is going to be destroyed in this eastern side. We're just going to wait a couple of seconds for it to move. And it does look like... Team 1's Master of Seasons has now completely vacated Vindex from this position in the west. 
So a nice little uh, revenge for the uh, death of Han Solo there. Looks like Nomander is actually going to shove his forces west, trying to avoid this, again, block of units and forces from Team 2. Gloss is going to get underneath a mobile, uh, not mobile, stationary shield. Looks like it is going to try to intercept this column of units outbound from Nomander. And like I said earlier, that was the downside with putting all of your eggs in one basket on the eastern side. Because this western side would definitely create a nice little hole for Team 1 to try to exploit. But it looks like all of the units have been given orders to move westward. And still moving westward here for Team 1's Nomander wants to try to go all the way around. But again, it's going to give a little bit of time for Team 2 to move in. Chicken moving in to intercept as well. So a Chicken and a Colossus. And now we see those suction arms from the Colossus being able to take at least a couple of units away from that battle line. And now all those units are going to retreat, looks like, at a little bit. Giving again more time for Team 2 to move in. Had there been a secondary army in the east, it would be the perfect time to attack. But that wasn't going to do a whole lot. Looks like this army might engage. They move the Colossus uh, out of position here from Team 2's defensive line. The Bricks are moving in. The Chicken is moving in as well. So even if the Colossus from Team 2 is destroyed, if Team 1's Nomander doesn't move their Colossus back, it's going to be a murder-suicide situation. Bricks, Harbingers, and other Harbingers from the east crashing down. Corsair is coming over the top, targeting that. Colossus, a lot of Corsairs dying to flak and other T3 AA, but the damage is done. The Colossus is dead here for Team 2. But like I said, the damage is done, and the rest of those units are going to be destroyed. Master of Seasons is defeated by Twitchy Mofo. Looks like it was by a chicken, and Team 1 will lose another player. It's a 3v5. Colossus is destroyed on Team 2's front line, or at least the, you know, their side of the map. Looks like there's some engineers building some T1 land facilities for probably reclaim efforts, but I don't know if that's going to really go anywhere. Nomander will inherit everything that uh, Master of Seasons owned. It's going to jumpstart his eco once again. Team 1 is getting back up there in the match generation. 1.4 versus 1.6. There is a satellite online here for Team 2. Sorry, for Team 1 going at Team 2. Another satellite going to be built here by the air player of SPCR. Team 2, do you have anything in the tank to fight this? No, he's going for shields and SMD coverage as well as his other teammates. Lots of mass facilities going to be established here by Twitchy Mofo to jumpstart his eco. And I don't, again, I don't see any efforts by most of the players on Team 2 going for experimentals. Only really Twitchy Mofo and Gamer9, but I don't see another one being built here by Gamer9 yet. Looks like it's going to be a little bit before he builds another one. But he's going to keep to keep on pushing against Nomander. They have the forces. I think it's essentially a 2v1 here. Nice absolver here from Team 1's Nomander. Going to be able to take out the shields. But doesn't do a lot of damage, of course, to the actual hold hit points. And lots of wall sections. Don't really know what's going on. Looks like kitchen uh, chicken scratches to me. Don't have any idea what this means. Probably messing up with the uh, the movement, but those engineers will be targeted as well, and those wall sections will be destroyed. Another Harbinger the group is outbound from Team 1, escorted by a Colossus, and now a Chicken also online here. The Harbingers will be forced back here, but the damage again is going to be done. It's definitely, again, a, a back and forth in the northeastern section. Team 2 gets ahead, Team 1 gets ahead, Team 2 gets ahead, Team 1 gets ahead, and it's just back and forth. But these Harbingers are going to be able to press this position. Chicken is moving into intercept, but there is a Chicken online for Nomander standing guard of these mexes. At least some of the mexes, some of them have been destroyed. If Team 1's Nomander doesn't notice the Chicken moving in, it's, oh, it's going to get behind the Colossus from Team 1's Nomander and going to go right beside the Chicken from Team 2. And, uh, looks like he was, a, he was just being paid off, uh, don't notice anything, Team two, Team 1. Don't know what's going on there. Looks like the chicken has now been given orders to move, but he's getting into this base over here. Don't, lose, don't really know what's going to happen. The Omni's going to go down, which is going to be nice, but isn't really that important. It's essentially just donating mass to Team 1 at this point. But Harbinger is being isolated by that Colossus. Team 2 losing a lot of the defenders in the east, but it doesn't really matter because all those forces from Nomander are over there. 
Chicken going to intercept the chicken here from team two, sorry, from team one, and going to die. Looks like not in range of that. Oh, it's going to be pretty close to that Omni. We'll see in a second if uh, it will get it. Takes out some Harbingers. Does get the Omni, so at least Team 1 is blind for the time being in that respect. T2 backup facility also online, so that can upgrade to T3. And the Harbingers still trying to get away of that. Colossus and the Bricks. Actually, excuse me, there's no more Bricks. Harbingers getting into the Mexes here for Nomander. Definitely not going to appreciate that. Small sections trying to stop the movement of the Harbingers here from Team 2's Game of 9, but still haven't been able to stop them. Chicken now pushing in. It's all engineers here for Team 2. Multiple players focusing a lot of efforts and reclaiming all of those units. They did a pretty good, pretty good job of that. The defense satellite targeting the chickens here for Team 2. Very interesting play. They're not going into the rear and going after anything else. Feel like uh, there was time to go after maybe P gens or something, but more shields are going to be built, especially for the air player. Definitely uh, going to shield all of his valuable stuff up. And Harbingers still getting in, and all of these units, the Harbingers and the Colossus included, trying to stave off this incursion. There are Harbingers coming in to intercept, and PD artillery, everything's being built. An emissary has been started for Nomander, so he's going to start getting into the long range game of the long range stage of the game another t3 mex is going down and nomander is just suffering here t3 land facility not dead but you know almost dead and everything is just going up in smoke it looks like those harbingers going to avoid all the pd being built i don't know if they noticed the artillery no that they did not of course again going after the mexes at a minimum looks like they'll go back north a little bit more units trying to intercept, trying to bottleneck Team 2's forces, but still they outnumber Team 1's forces, at least their defenders for the time being. Harbingers are going to get lost here from Game of 9, but still, huge attack. No man are going to come in with his gun and Rascom and kill off one of those uh, Harbingers. Eh, I don't think it'll be enough to kill off the calm of No Man. Another overcharge kills off another of the Harbingers. Another T3 mix is the main target. Mass assassination is the goal here for Game of Nine. And it's done a great job in just taking out multiple mexes here. Taking out two, four, six, seven, eight. Probably going to get a ninth one right here. Lots of mass being lost here by Team 1. It's dropping the totals. Team 2 at 2.1, Team 1 at 1.3. So it's done a huge number on Team 1's eco. And Vindex pushing forward with dual chicken support here from. Twitchy Mofo, Fatboy is online. PD being established here by Sin Ziggy. And some nano combatant preset commanders are online. But of course, the chickens are going to be able to wreck those T3 units really, really quickly. There it goes. They can only do so much, of course, those uh, SACUs. Armagers now finished off here for Game of Nine. But still, the damage was inflicted quite heavily, given a lot of time for Mutsu to build up more forces. And had this group of Colossus and Harbingers crashed onto Team 2's doorstep, I don't think it would have been enough to, for Team 2 to hold. And that would have been it for Mutso's forces. And now he has a crab, so he's now going to have a lot of uh, resources to use for defensive measures. Again, Game and I'm playing the very much support slash assist slash I'm just going to storm your gates and call it a day. Roll, he's done a very good job of that. So far, I feel like if Team 2 wins the game, I think I might give him MVP. Just due to the you know constant assisting he's giving, constant just raiding, all that. Looks like Sin Ziggy does officially get killed off here by Team 2's Twitchy Mofa with some assistance from Vin Dex. And now it is a 2v5 in favor of Team 2. Team 1 needs a win in some respect. 38 minutes on the clock, two satellites online. Nomander, he's getting that emissary, and that's probably gonna start losing, sorry, winning the game for them at least a little bit in that regard. Lose a grand whole game, epic, says Sin Ziggy. Uh, team one didn't divert as many resources for Sin Ziggy to defend. I just did the ground, this Vindex. I mean, he did. he's done a great job in pushing. And then Matsu says, I don't know how I didn't die. Well, I mean, you had some assistance from your teammates, so that's how you didn't die. But large Ravager banks are being built here. T3, air headquarters, that could be a nice target to take out. Oh, check in, target that. That'd be worth it. Pigeon would be good to take out. Nope, not going to get anything. And now it's going to be just 
bunkering down here for Team 1. Multiple Fat Boys online. No Mender builds an experimental, another Colossus. Uh, two Colossus, a bunch of T3 units here for Team 1. I have nothing. Because, forget you, you ruined my front, says SPCR. And it looks like they're... Uh, Colossus are not with the main group. The one Colossus should be enough to take out most of these forces. And the crap is going to divert westwards. So will be able to start uh, pincering against the two Colossus here from Team 1. So no mander. I don't know if this is the push. He probably should have waited for another Colossus. Especially considering there is a Colossus over here from Gamer9. Completely avoids the two Colossus here from Team 1. All those units actually fall back. Allow the Colossus, the Colossus, not Colossus, Colossus to move in. Crab still trying to catch up with them. PD being built as fast as it can. Strap Bombers over the top. Going to target one of the Colossus first. The Western one more. Bombers coming in this time. It's T2 Corsairs. It's 1v2 here between these two. Sorry, three Colossus. More Corsairs coming in. Crashing down on top of that Colossus. Probably should be targeting the same one that the one from uh, Team 2's Gamer 9 is targeting. But more Corsairs and more bombers raining in here for Team 2's air player. That Colossus is going to be done and dusted. This Colossus is also going to be done and dusted. This position is going to be perfectly fine. That's a nice little mass gift here for Team 2. Uh, easy players at BG. Be gone, maybe? I don't know what that means. Meet my lobby analysis index. And the PD and most of the infrastructure do go down, but the T3 Mexes, surprisingly, are still alive. So, you know, oh, two of the three of them at least. Fun survival map says Sin Ziggy. You can see Vindex just constantly pushing. He did get pushed back a little bit, but then did a lot of it more pushing back. Chickens coming online here for Team 1. They need some way to attack and rain. Satellites is one way to do that. They're going to get a fourth one soon. Do we have anything, says Twitchy Mofo. And Strat says Vindex. Yeah, they are strats. There's a decent amount of those. Team one sitting at, sorry, team two sitting at 11 strats. That should be enough to take out most of those satellites in one pass. Do you say to these shields, what do you say to these shields now? What's, what is he talking about? Oh, talking about the mobile shields. I was wondering what the heck they were talking about. Could be attacking the air player with those satellites. Could be attacking Twitchy Mofo. Could be attacking, um... But so taking this position out, there could be a lot of just kind of poking and prodding that the satellites are doing, but they're constantly focused on Vindex. But Vindex is a threat, to be fair, to Team 1, but I don't think he's the biggest threat. I think uh, there's a there's a there's something to be said about Twitchy Mofo focusing on chicken production. Obviously, Gamer9 getting in, getting around Nomander multiple times. That Colossus did die over here, but, you know, did a lot of harassing. ASF's coming in. Again, the air player could be a huge target because that's really what's keeping Team 2 ahead in this game due to the fact they've had air for a long time and Team 1 just could not build up enough air. Your shield's too slow. There's conversations going on in chat between SPCR and Vindex. Monkey running around. Colossus and Chicken as well. There should be a Colossus and, Colossus and Crab as well. There should be a Chicken... And there is a fat boy online. So all of the experimentals for land are, you know, I was going to say alive at the same time, not on the same team. Don't see any fat boy production out from Team 2. Very surprisingly from Vindex, which is focusing on spam. It's constantly annoying Team 1. Actually drawn the fat boys out. And looks like the bombers are gearing up for an attack. Ace have come in to shield them from the AA. Lots of Corsairs and bombers are inbound. ASF will collide intercepting those bombers and it's going to be air dominance here. Tons of bombers getting annihilated here by the air power of Team 1 and I think the bombers waited a little bit too long. They're not going to get any targets killed off unfortunately here but it will be an air dominance victory here for Team 2. I have no E sadly says Vindex. And so his shields are not staying online. I guess they're just blinking on and off. Yeah, he's really struggling on power generation. 
And satellite's now going to be retasked onto different targets. Looks like they might go after the air player, might be my uh, guess. Artillery is started here for Twitchy Mofo. Team 1 has their own artillery under construction. It's almost in the green. Looks like it's actually barely stopped production. It's kind of very slow now. Mutso pushing back against Nomander here in the east. Going to clear up all of these units over there, all the wall sections that tried to be built. And this is the last bastion, essentially, of Team 1's forces. Of course, there is something to be said about Nomander over here, but this is the last bastion. If this falls, that's game. That's, that's it. That's all she wrote. More strap bombers being built up, and gunships as well here from Team 2's air player. And she's not, not, uh, not going well here for Team 1. They, there is a path to victory, I feel like. If they can take out the air power of Team 2, they might have a uh, way back in this game. But Team 2 is building artillery as well. As, as at least a secondary art player is building artillery. Second player, not secondary. So two artillery pieces are being constructed versus the one from Team 1. I'm close to unit cap since Vindex. That is a lot of units online, I would say. But they're constantly dying, though. So, you know, it's kind of like you built a unit, and the unit dies, and spam less is SPCR, and he says no. So, doesn't look like that's going to stop. One, two, three, four satellites online. Five satellites online for Team 1. SPCR should be focusing all of those satellites onto one target. Looks like they're going after the facilities here for... Gamer 9 taking out the T3 land headquarters. It's going to prevent Team 2's Gamer 9 from producing Harbingers. My Titans are hell divers right now, says <laughs> SBCR. Uh, that's funny. Love the reference. Yeah, they're running around the map taking out all of that spam. Oh, yeah, right here. <laughs> He's just going for it. Uh, that's funny. There is an Othem nearby. The Othem will die, unfortunately. Like of T1 land spam. Oh, yeah, right here, down here. Look at this. Just in the middle of everything here. They are going to get destroyed just by all the T3 units, but uh, they did do a great job of kind of deterring a little bit of that spam. Satellites kind of just all over the place here for SPCR. Again, should be focusing on one target. Could be taking out the artillery that's being built. Could be taking out the other artillery that's being built that's also actually constructed. Actually, it's not even being built. It's done. And now that artillery will probably target Team 1's SPCR's base. Emissary is done here for Team 1 over here. Lots of PD. Lots of PD. Needs some artillery, though. And there is a Colossus online, so Team 1's Nomander will be fine for now. Building layered defenses here. Love to see it. It is a little bit close. But AoE cannons will definitely assist Team 2 in dealing with that. Chicken's pushing on the southern side of the map, so being assailed from multiple fronts here in the north. We have, like, 100 RAS SACUs. Oh, that's rough. That is a lot of SACUs. And let's see, where are those satellites? They're kind of, like I said, just all over the place. They should be working together. They're targeting engineers. I don't, again, I don't really know if they're being microed or not. They're probably not. It's probably the problem. He's just spamming up. Another satellite is done here. One, two, three, four, five, six satellites are done for Team One. But will it be enough? I don't think so. They're not being microed as heavily as I normally expect them to. And Nomander being assailed by a, cra a crab and a monkey. Monkey gets killed off. PD just ravaging that front line here for Mutso. Mutso going to now feel the pain of a laser straight to the face here from that Colossus. Emissary is the main, well, one of the main two military assets here for Team 1. They need to keep that online, and they also need to keep their all of their satellites online. Some of them not underneath shield coverage. Probably should fix that, especially with... Artillery landing here from a team two. Looks like the satellites are going to start moving southward. Don't really know where the other ones are. There's one over there. There's one over there. There's one over there. Probably should start talking the targeting the artillery here for team two. It's right here, sitting there. The other one is over here. That one has been completed. Second artillery is done. Third one has been constructed. Actually, that third one is done for BRS. So three artillery online versus the one from team one. Definitely a mismanagement of satellites. Could have easily taken those two positions out, especially with the emissary support from uh, Nomander. But now, with three artillery online against SPCR, he's really struggling to keep those shields online here pretty shortly. I don't know if even all the artillery is targeting the uh, satellites, but Crab staying at range. I love how there's offense behind the, art the Crab. I heard an explosion somewhere. Looks like some SACUs took an artillery shot to the face. Uh, shields being spammed up. 
Hegens are being annihilated. The, em the emitter gets almost destroyed, but is still alive. Saves those uh, SACU's lives. And we do see some uh, pings going down from Team 1 saying focusing the uh, artillery. Should have done that like two, three minutes ago. But anyway, now the satellite has been completed. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven satellites online for Team 1. And will it be enough? Oh, artillery shot lands right next to an artillery piece. Oh, not artillery piece. A Novax. That's, that's got to hurt. Pretty Mofo says do something useful. Who says Vindex? I'll probably talking to Vindex. Probably would be uh, surprised. But Mutso, again, doing a very good job and just forcing Nomander into a corner. Artillery is still online. You, <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of who I figured <laughs> he was talking to. Emissary again focusing fire on that uh, bank of artillery pieces. One of them is down. And like I said, had those artillery pieces, not artillery pieces, the Novak satellites focused a little bit sooner. Those probably would not even come online. Four satellites are over here. I don't know. There's a fifth one over here. You should have seven of them. Unless he lost a few already. The uh, Novak center is still fine. And shields are being assisted to defend. Yeah, there's four there, and there's four here. So there should be... Sorry, there's three here and four there. So there should be seven of them, but I only see four orange dots. And Gamer9 is exposed. Oh, artillery shot almost lands directly on top of that disruptor. Another uh, burst of energy should be enough to kill that artillery piece off. Yes, it is. So two of the three artillery pieces are down for Team 2. I will try to hold, says, S uh, says Nomander. And he's doing a pretty good job of holding so far. Team 1 might come back from this, even though that Team 2 is demolishing them on territory. 58 minutes on the clock. And I don't know who they're going to target now. Looks like they're going after the exposed p -gens down here. Looks like they do have a, a vector to go after that P... Ooh, that's going to blow up. That's not going to feel good. And that's underneath shield coverage. Also not a good thing. Get some nice little AoE spread. Doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but... Uh, Shields are being assisted, so definitely assist. Definitely assist with dealing with that. Bombers over to the west. There is a decent amount of T2 flak over here on that western side. I don't know if they'll get be able to pass on through. Do Sats still have Omni? Says Vindex. Uh, they should, I believe. Yeah, they have Omni. So Vindex is sad. And a section of the air grid is down. Two of the comms for Team 2 are sitting almost right next to one another. Looks like they're targeting... Shouldn't be targeting PD that can't fire at satellites. Should be targeting shields and stuff like that. Right click with it with SAT, says Vindex. And the Revenants are given orders to move in. AA firing, going after those uh, Strat Bombers. Oh, it's a lot of AA to fly through. Both T3 and T2. Is it going to be enough? Oh, they've taken out one, two of the satellites. Chicken in the main base here from Team 2. Switchy Mofo. Two of the satellites are down. They still have five remaining. First chicken is down. Harbingers as well assisting going after the mass fab. That might cause a nice little chain reaction here. Another satellite goes down. That's three of them down. Team 1 still has four of them remaining. This attack came in from the east. Nomander still holding strong in the east as well. Emissary still online. Lots of spam. Inbound still isn't stopping anytime soon. Corsairs go after, I guess, some key gens. Second chicken still alive somehow. Chicken will target the mass map. Nice chain reaction taken out of a chunk of that eco here from Team 1. And Team 1's still alive. They still have a chance. They have, well, Four satellites remaining. This satellite will not survive, unfortunately. Who crashed? Sorry, it's me. Shift uh, going artilleries. This spam just constantly, you know, pushing on Team One's doorstep. There's not that many satellites left. You can see where some of them fell down. It looks like the artillery. Oh, the shields are starting to fall. A lot of mobile shields are online. Emissary fire targeting the artillery from Team. Uh, one targeting the artillery from Team 2. Cloaking is canceled. Starting teleport assist Mutzo. Mutzo might play the sacrifice uh, play and go in and take out the other uh, Novaxes. 
but a lot of the infrastructure is done and dusted here for Team 1. I don't know if they have the uh, resources to repel another attack like that. Artillery focusing on the satellites here from Team 1. Emissary still targeting. They need to take out that artillery piece sooner rather than later. Shields are down around that artillery piece. One of them, of course, severely wounded. The other one uh, just still in the green. Shield comes back online. And will it be enough? The shields are still holding. That uh, wall of spam closing in on Team 1's territory. And artillery has taken out the shields here for those satellites. Whoa, that was a weird lag there a little bit. Artillery takes out one of the satellites. Four of them remain. One of them just got built, so they lose one. They gain one. The emissary over here to the northeast is still perfectly fine. Whaler's going to come in. There's not a lot of AA, but there are a decent amount of shields, so those amount of whalers are not going to be enough, unfortunately. For Team 2 to crack. One of the artillery pieces are down. Pigeon is the main target. Will it get reclaimed so the AOE doesn't happen? No. Shield comes back online. Shields are falling over here as well. Target the emitters. Yep, great job from SPR microing that a little bit. Love to see that. You target the emitters, they can't uh, emit shields because the emitters are down. The bug online here for Team 2's red player of Mutso. Lots of flak also right here. Not to... Uh, Going to be very friendly to that uh, bug. Going to shoot it away. And defenses, again, still collapsing. It's the beginning of the end, I feel like, for Team 1. It has been for a little bit. But Team 2 is fighting back. They still have some satellites in the air. I still feel like had they gone after the artillery sooner, they probably could have prevented the construction at least of one of these. And they might have had a better time. But Mutso is defeated by Nomander. Mutso teleports in. Goes after the calm of Nomander. Gets annihilated for it. And is now a 4v2 in favor of Team 2. Team 2 loses their first play at 52 minutes. Bug online. Lots of flak though. So probably shouldn't keep that bug that in there. Bug pushes in. One Actually will probably fall back due to that amount of uh, AA coming off of those. Black skyboxes by artillery raining in, taking out some hit points on board, some key gens. And now the Ravager is able to target the now ground unit of the Soul Ripper. Soul Ripper is destroyed. No, not, uh, no, sorry, not those. Corsair's coming and taking out another one of those Novaxes. Artillery hits, almost takes out a P gen. Satellites are done. There's two more remaining. I would never swear, I swear this treatment. I have 90k mass who needs it, says Vindex. Vindex, do you really have 90k mass? Oh, just that he has 20-something. But uh, more of the satellite stations are down. The last one has been destroyed. Did the last artillery piece survive? Yes, it did. And one emissary is not going to break that shielding anytime soon. It's Novak's over for me. you got to get mixes and win the game. Nomander is... Defeated. He, I think he throws in the towel. Yep, he control case, seeing the writing on the wall. Because once this position fell here for SPCR, you know, a bad game? Maybe that's what BG means, bad game? Because so, there's GG for good game. I'm, stay, I'm staying alive, says SPCR. I don't know why I just failed brutally. Master does epic. Stop lagging. South collapse too hard. Left front, yeah, left front collapse too hard. Yep. I did warn that that might happen, but Team 1 couldn't make it happen on the eastern side. So, it's just kind of one of those things. Another artillery built? Looks like another artillery was built by Team 2, and yeah, this position is done and dusted. Is that? That looked like, uh... Am I, oh, no, that's just the disruptive fire. It looked like, uh, Salvation Fire. I can't produce in 29 more facilities. BRS control Ks? What? Don't know what happened with that. Maybe he lagged out or something? Uh, GG. UEF is best known for turtle. Well, yeah, so turtle, I shall. Uh, I wish you could transfer Novaxes. Yeah, so when what happens when you transfer Novaxes is the satellite itself gets destroyed and then gets rebuilt immediately. So it makes it without sending it. Yeah, without sending it back to the station. Yeah, exactly. It, I don't know why that's the case. It just is. I think that's a way for them to not be as OP, but don't really know. SPCR has been defeated. 
due to bombers and the like. Vindex wins the game for himself and his team. And that is it. Team two wins the game at 53 and a half, sorry, 54 and a half minutes. And still, I gotta probably give it to Gamer9 Triple X for the MVP. He did a heck of a job shielding this eastern side. Had this side fallen, it would have essentially been the same thing on the western side that we see, just constantly back and forth in terms of you know, defenses falling, getting back online, falling, getting back online. Team 2 would have been pushed into a corner like Team 1 was, but Gamer9 held strong. Of course, we had uh, the air player BRS come in and assist a little bit in the eastern side as well. There were one time four players on Team 1 on, just on this eastern side, they could not make it happen, partly in due to, of course, to Team 2 coming together. So I love that gameplay, and especially due to the fact that Gamer9 came in, took out a lot of mexes for Nomander, constantly raiding, constantly being annoying. But I think Gamer9 gets the MVP award for me. Let me know down in the comments if you feel the same way or not. Please, if you haven't done so already, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and thank you so very much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it, and I will see all of you in the next one.